In this bold new book, I present a captivating and disruptive new idea about the speed of light, and I support it thoroughly with logic and evidence. What makes this new idea powerful is its coherence and its elegance as compared to Einstein's relatively convoluted account of the same phenomenon. The idea is that light doesn't really have a speed, although it does appear to from a certain perspective. Einstein and everyone else had assumed that a particular beam of light would move at some particular speed, just as all of the objects and waves that we are familiar with do. But I say that light is special. Light actually moves at a range of speeds and directions at the same time, but we can't see all of the light from any particular vantage point. To view the full supervelocity, we must integrate perspectives from different locations in space and from different locations in velocity space. Time and space do not need to bend in order to accommodate the strange, observer-centered and observer-dependent behavior of light. An insight from quantum mechanics offers us the missing puzzle piece. I use the idea of velocity space in order to better understand the behavior of light, but also to demonstrate that the speed and direction of an object does not depend on the arbitrary settings of any coordinate system or on the speed and direction of any observer. In other words, time and space are invariant in that they don't vary depending on what we arbitrarily consider to be stationary. While motion is indeed relative, this doesn't mean that motion is merely a matter of perspective, and neither is time and space. Because I define a speed as a distance in a three-dimensional velocity space, the idea is that just as distance is a relationship between two points in space, a speed is also a relationship between two points in velocity space. I have found that it was not necessary to fill this book up with equations. Instead, my focus has been on clarifying, defining, and sorting out basic concepts. I have also relied heavily on thought experiments and analogies. I explore the details and implications of the supervelocity and selection theory of light in depth, but I also spend just as much time with inspecting and dissecting the finer points of Einstein's special theory of relativity. The supervelocity and selection theory of light adheres to the original postulates of special relativity, while also circumventing the need for relativistic flexibility in time and space. This novel theory explains how the observer and the speed of light are related much more efficiently than any prior theory, and it dispenses with the notion of the speed of light as a cosmic speed limit. I make use of a rainbow analogy to get across the main idea. Even though a rainbow appears to stand in a particular location, we know that it really doesn't because as we move, the rainbow moves also. The rainbow is not a real object, it's merely an image, and it is observer-dependent in the same way that the speed of light is. The rainbow looks like it's in a particular place because the observer is in a particular place. But the rainbow really is everywhere and nowhere at the same time, just as we find that light is whenever we try to map out its location in velocity space. You've now heard what I have to say, but what does the empirical evidence have to say about these theories? I address the relevant experimental results thoroughly in the book, and this video is really just intended to get the word out. If you want to know more, the book is available from all of these retailers in hardcover, paperback, and ebooks. The ebook is the best option if you're on a budget, but you can also find roughly three hours worth of free audiobook content on this YouTube channel. So be sure to like, share, and hit the subscribe button.